We're going to call to order this meeting, regular meeting of the Board of Directors of Oxford Preparatory Academy at 4.09 p.m. July 26, 2018. Open session starting at 4 o'clock p.m. Closed session at 4.10 and returning to open at 6.10. Meeting location is Oxford Preparatory Academy, 23000 Via Santa Maria, Mission Viejo, California and teleconference location, Oxford Preparatory Academy, Saddleback Valley Campus, 22882 Lumont Drive, Lake Forest, California. The public, including public attending a teleconference location, are invited to address the board regarding items listed on the agenda. Comments on an agenda item will be accepted during consideration of that item or prior to consideration of the item in the case of a closed session item. Please turn in comment cards to the board secretary prior to the item you wish to speak on. Call to order. Joseph Haney, Chairman present, Raymond Jackson, Vice Chair, currently absent, Priscilla Trache, Secretary, is absent, Joshua Teeple, Member, present, and Mary Campos, Member, present. All right, next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please you rise, place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic Next item for on the agenda is approval of the agenda for the regular board meeting for July 26, 2018. It is recommended the Board of Directors approve the agenda for the regular board meeting for July 26, 2018. And I understand that the interim executive director would like to remove several items, so I would m recommend or make a motion to remove under Roman numeral four, items D2 and three, then items E2 and E4. I'll second the move, uh, I'll second your motion to, uh, to approve the agenda as amended. Can I uh, also, never mind, we'll just change it. Okay, okay. we'll do that then. Yeah. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, this motion passes unanimously. Public announcement of reason for closed session is A, conference with legal counsel, anticipated lit litigation, government code 54956.9D4, one case. B, conference with legal counsel, ongoing litigation, government code 54956.9D1. A, Oxford Preparatory Academy versus Ed Light and Learning Solutions. And B, Oxford Preparatory Academy versus Chino Valley Unified School District. C, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, government code 54956.9D4. Two, two cases. D, public employee appointment discussion, government code 54957, physicians, executive director, and chancellor. And E, employee discipline, dismissal, and release. Public comments on closed session items. Remarks for closed session items shall be limited to no more than three minutes. Please turn your comment card into the board secretary prior to this agenda item. Do we have any comment cards? All right, we now depart for closed session at 4 12 p.m. All right, we're going to return to open session at 6.51 p.m. There is nothing to report from closed session. Next item on the agenda is presentations, reports, and correspondence, starting with site reports, and the first one being the 2018-2019 staff development planned activities, Tammy Lohoff and Michelle Schutz. My favorite. Pink. Salmon? Pepto Bismol? Pink. Wow. That is the so best color. Salmon. <laughs> it's Pepto Bismol, uh, though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Pink Bismuth. <laughs> this is so cute. Okay. This is from the Honor Society. Brandy uh, Matthews brought this in. Nice. Brandy? Brandy brought this in. Sure, I brought this too. That's good. Okay, are we ready? Good evening, board. What? So, um, in your folder you will find, first off, um, we're kind of over the next three agenda items there, those presentations, we're gonna just put them all together for you. We've been doing a lot of collaboration, conversation, 
we have uh, the very first thing in your folder would be the PD uh, professional development schedule that we're going to be going into typically in the past it's been called a boot camp but we have many 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 professors returning so we're not putting them through your typical boot camp we try to um, we've come up with a theme called excellence it's the only option it will be the professor theme for professional development moving forward this year um, we begin on the 9th and all of us uh, we've decided that it probably is very important that as two campuses we collaborate together and spend a lot of time since there's been a few changes and we would like to build a rapport and um, do some real team building so if you'll notice right quick I'm just going to kind of walk you through our honor societies are taking care and our local communities through donations are taking care of breakfast at the SV campus on the first day and then the HS for SOC is taking care of lunch we'll have a, a welcome a couple of icebreakers we'll discuss the culture the very first thing coming up is going to be meet your professor so we'll have examples of how that is and what it will look like and what the expectation is and then we'll go into teaching uh, and training our educational program of the multiple intelligence philosophy as we continue in the afternoons we'll discuss the changes if any in our parent information handbook what the expected antecedents of our OPA culture are and how they can be taught to our students and reinforced and then we will have an Aries training on attendance and grades on that Friday because we'll be passing out themed t-shirts of excellence the only option our professors will be wearing their new t-shirts and we will go into uh, PLC so we can start the conversation uh, regarding data from the get-go this will be a training on how to conduct a PLC how to participate in a PLC what our expectations should be as professionals as far as um, communication both horizontally and vertically and then we will um, continue by having lunch and then go to our respective sites for additional trainings and I'll let Michelle do the next piece. Okay. 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 So as far as the additional training, we will be there's a lot of uh, additional training will be what our particular staff will need for instance whoever are either new or myself, we have five new teachers, so we're going to actually have to be working with those five teachers. Or in our math block, we're changing the teachers teaching different things, so they will have time to work. So um, I met with each of my teachers at the end of the year and talked about what their greatest needs in staff development are. Tim's teachers had some of the same needs, so some of that's embedded in this, but some of it we will do in the afternoon, and then we will continue to do it on our Fridays. So a lot of this will be in So on Monday, they have a day to work in their classrooms. We will be doing professional development. And those of you know that even when we do professional development, the teachers head through in their classrooms trying to get them ready for their work. So we want to make sure we have that day. And so then on Tuesday, we will have them wear their team shirts again. We're going to get good use out of them. We will be meeting here, and we're going to have, we're really looking at our teachers to help teach and be presenters. So we are doing a session on best practices, backwards planning, and we're going to have um, two of the SOCs speaking to that, Professor Booth and Professor Bachelor, and then two of our SV teachers, Professor Moore and Sister Robert, we're going to be doing sessions on SFP, and we really want to give that to all of our teachers so we can do the same thing as we look at students that may need extra support. And then Dr. Hall is going to be coming in and putting on our scholar we are going back to our at our own sites and we are being we're providing lunches that day so we'll be having pizza and then at our own sites we will be going over the handout the calendar the bell tickets all of those things that pertain to the individual sites school forms um, and our honors these are honor societies coming in that day too our honor society is asking to have about a half hour with our staff to talk about what kind of things they will do to support their 
On Wednesday, we go back to SD in the morning and we're doing some of our manual updates, sexual harassment. Um, we have mandated reporters, all those things that by law we have to annually go over with our, with our teachers. And also going to get the social media and um, some of the things that we need to take care of. We're going to have a potluck that day. Ask teachers to bring salads and desserts and drinks. And then that afternoon, we're going to do our staff development, our first part of differentiation, but we're going to be working with gate strategies and some of gate teachers. And we have quite a few gates certified teachers at SD. We have a couple here. We also, we have had one of the requests for SOC teachers was to get a certification, so we're going to give them an outlet to for them to do that. Um, and then the next day at our respective sites, we're going to have your meet your professor for scholar academy in the morning. And in the afternoon, we're going to have them work in the classroom. And then that will be the time I, be, I or a student chancellor will be pulling out new teachers and working with them. Can you hear <laughs> Okay. <laughs> On Friday, it's meet your professor day. We're going to have it do it at the same time from 9 to 11. And um, you could, we change that. Um. No, on, on Friday we do the same time. Okay. Scholar Academy time. is just different. This is, right, so that's a little bit different. And then lunch is on their own in that afternoon. They will have the opportunity to work as a team. Still can't hear it because I'm short. They'll have the time to work as a team and start their initial planning to get ready for the start of the new year. So to carry it a little bit further as some of our requests from teachers, um, for on our campus on the 24th of um, month of August, we're going to be having a training on AR, um, which our S Honor Society is purchasing for our teachers. But then we will continue. We have a request to train our teachers on Google Classroom, and we're going to do some team, team building, training our teachers, taking the PLCs a step further, and training them how to do peer observations. So when you find those strong instructional strategies, which is where we want our PLCs to get to, um, we can go observe other teachers. So we'll be working on that. We want to provide support for our teachers on training and social emotional support, nurtured heart, PBIS, second step, um, restorative justice, something that give them some tools to work with their students in their classroom. We will continue with differentiated instruction, including GATE. Um, we've had a request to help them teach students on the computers in their classroom, and that we also need to do some additional training with our classified staff. So as now, that's how we're going to start our year. So that takes care of our professional development. And then I have provided each of you what our, with our staffing for um, SB. We actually only had one teacher um, not return. And because we did have a qualified um, and certificated teacher that was on staff with us last year, she transitioned right into the classroom for us. We have another professor on campus who is pursuing her administrative credential. And so we've moved her to uh, a middle school position in order to give her an opportunity to expand her, her knowledge and her experience. We um, pretty much have the same thing going on. We have a couple of world language uh, non-core instructors to hire. Otherwise, we're a pretty full campus. We're looking for a health tech, obviously, um, because we've had um, Mrs. Willicks uh, leave at the end of the year. But other than that, we remained pretty intact. So we're looking forward to a really strong start. We are looking for a chancellor. We are looking for a dean. <laughs> we will be reorganizing our office because we did have our clerk leave. We are hiring five teachers. We are looking for a counselor, a daytime custodian, and a French teacher and a Spanish teacher for our world language program. And three proctors. So we will be really busy within the next two <laughs> weeks um, to get everybody ready before we start our staff development. But we did pass out our staffing list and we have placed the five new teachers that we will be hiring so you can see the new uh, teachers that we will have. I need to clarify why we need world language um, instructors and that's because our program changed last year for the middle school six seven and eight where we moved into instead of exposure 
we moved into proficiency, trying to get these kids ready for high school to start beyond, be able to assess and start beyond their first year. So we were very fortunate last year. Everyone, we had a lot of kids transition from, for example, French one to French two. So the new kids coming in, of course, the expectation is they would be in French one if they chose that, unless they continue with Mandarin. The possibility that they would be in Mandarin two if they remained in, in um, that world language for their primary years then we have a need to expand our program just a little bit. So that's why there's a need for world language pr uh, instructors on both campuses. The last thing in your packet that you will find um, is very similar. We collaborated on this a bit. Um, the SOC campus is still pretty much in draft form as they're making staff assignments and stuff. Our emergency drills pretty much align as far as a couple, couple of differences. But for the most part, we're looking at the same types of drills. We've tried to cover all emergency situations from natural disasters to intruders um, and what those protocols would look like. I know that both campuses have included this past year their um, SROs, the Sheriff's Resource Officers, School Resource Officers and the preparations of, of these. So you have our initial emergency plan that looks like this with the OPA logo on the front. Then you would have what our site-specific staff assignments are and our assembly teams. And they have also draft because Yes, as I said, you, uh, the SOC one is in draft because of course we need to fill in the names of personnel. Um, there also is a map of what it looks like at the SV campus to do an evacuation. If we need to leave campus, we would go to a lockdown first. Our professors have been taught that they do not release any student after a lockdown situation or a shelter in place unless it is a deputy or one of our team members that has been designated to be that individual that now goes around to tell each classroom that it is safe to vacate. We have three areas at SB in the na local neighborhood that the community is aware of, our SRO is aware of, and we've made um, our parents aware of what those very close evacuation points are. It needs to be noted that there would not ever be an announcement as to if we had to, for example, be removed from the local neighborhood. The sheriff's office will not um, announce where until they have totally evaluated what that emergency situation is. And we have teams set up to release children from those areas. The neighborhoods would be closed off and the sheriff's office would be coordinating with the Saddleback Valley Unified School District to actually bus students outside of our neighborhood if we had to evacuate to that extent. So we've been working very um, closely with them over the last year. We do have, you'll see another couple of pages that look like this. SV had developed for their parent communication last year a pamphlet that kind of outlines how we have, um, how we continue to modify, reflect and modify. Each time we have a drill, Mr. Bridges and I sit down and discuss with a variety of team members where did you see a struggle? What can we do to change it? Did we start running into kids where we couldn't evacuate? Right now what we have when we do evacuate is eighth graders leaving with kindergartners so that in a very hurried moment, an, a scary moment, our eighth graders are grabbing a kindergartner, throwing them under their arms and getting off campus with them. There is one thing that SOC has that we have not had the benefit to use yet and that is the security app and we are going to be working very closely um, with Paul to get it in place on our campus the same as it is here. And that, so that sums up my end of the presentation. I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle. So we did have great luck with using our security app at our last evacuation practice, but we do need, um, on the recommendation of our SRO, to change some of our evacuations so that we don't have as many students crossing streets. 
So we'll be working at that before our next drill and get that out to our teachers. A couple of days ago, we did have three cameras um, put up in different spots on our campus so that we have a good view of anyone walking up to the doors, windows, trying, try, really, that we can see very well and very, so it should help with our break-in problem. Um, we do have some needs that we have to work with on this campus. Some of them um, are dealing with the district because we need more outside lighting. I don't know if any of you have left here at night, but especially out in the front and out into the parking lot area, it's not safe. They at this time don't want to put in additional lighting, so we've been having the conversation of what we could do because there are some things that you can install where you're not really you know, putting holes in the wall and things like that to get the lighting. Um, we also need to ensure that all of our doors in our classrooms can be locked on the inside. That isn't completely around the office, haven't been completed yet. And then we have three classrooms, I took Kathy to show her one today, that don't have doors on them. And so um, we had asked our, the district if they were, would, could put doors, they can't do that, so we're trying to figure out what we can do. We had asked, I guess their initial request is there would be something that they could pull down. Right now it's locked by a curtain, which won't do his classroom any good if there's an intruder on campus and they have to, they're in the main part of the building so that if a intruder came in, they would be very easy to access. So we will be continuing to work on that. Um, that is something that we will do is bring the chancellor into where we hire him because that's something that we need to take care of right away. Any questions? On those uh, missing doors and missing locks, is that something that you anticipate uh, rectifying before class starts? Probably won't be done before classes start. If they've been like this for quite a while, and it was my understanding, because I was ready to go to the district and put in a request, I heard today that that has already been done. So I think once we get all of our maintenance people in place, we'll see what we can do, because I think it's going to be something that we're going to have to do on our end and have the district approve it. So that's So is there any way to on. follow up on that or expedite it? We're going to do the best we can, but it's still something we need the personnel to do it. Um, we looked today on where the doors could be put. I mean, there's going to have to be some structural changes, because right now we just have an arch with a curtain in front of it. So it's something that has to be a priority for sure. Well, I have questions. Don't go. I, so y you talked a lot about, uh, oh, first of all, the SRO, has the SRO seen our emergency plan? Yes. Okay. That's part of the requirement that the, both the fire department and the police department. What did he do, sign it or initial it or just tell you he saw it? Right. And he also came to ours also. Got it. And the, the SV plan, mm -hmm. so that's, uh, is that still a draft or is that one? Uh, pretty much everybody, since we're, we're pulling staff, please plug it in. Got it. And uh, we will redo ours as soon as we have the dean and the chancellor selected. Got it. Well, I think I saw uh, some names in there. Right. I wrote the new teacher's names, but we have to have the administrative names. Got and it. And then it will be completed. Okay. And then, um, and then you guys talked a lot about uh, teacher development, staff development, which is an important topic for all of us. So I, th I thank you for very much for, for, for touching on that. Um, is there, what kind of things can we do as a board to, to help that along, help, to help staff development? Well, I think part of it has to be generated at the school side. Um, I've talked to the staff here. And I think that our Fridays, because we do have our early dismissals for our PLCs and, and PD need to be utilized differently mm -hmm. to make sure that we're giving the biggest support to our s teachers. I when you, when you say different, describe different to me. More focused um, teachers have requested, and I understand that, especially with our non-core. Um, actually, one teacher said, you know, we work so hard trying to differentiate mm -hmm. for our students. We need to start differentiating for our staff because we have non-core people sitting in on staff development on something that they will never use. So we really want to become more directed and make sure that we're maximizing our minutes mm. and there's not downtime because we just don't have that much time with our teachers. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I felt one of the most valuable things that I experienced in the 
those two months was meeting with every single teacher and talking to them about what do you feel like you need to become a better teacher and to do your job better and more effectively? And they came up easily with the type of staff development that they felt that they needed to do a better job here. Awesome. So that's a great conversation. That's to have, a it sounds great like. conversation. And we talked about staff professional development as a staff as a whole, but also as an individual or a grade level. Because what a kindergarten teacher needs may not be what an eighth grade teacher needs. Touché. So that is the work that in my the transition with a new chancellor, I we put it all in a doc that mm -hmm. we can share so we can go over that with them and we found when tammy and i start working together that the needs are very similar we have a lot of new curriculum um, they have purchased it before when they got their first grant we're just purchasing now we have a lot of training to do with teachers but we can't just give them stuff if we don't teach them the skills to use it right because otherwise they're overloaded right so that's really what our goal would be for this year. We have a new ELA and writing program coming, um, and they're fine-tuning theirs, and we have a new science. So there's a lot of new things that we'll be sharing with staff. Got it. So when you say Friday afternoon, try to cut down on the downtime, you mean sort of the chit-chat well, time and not, more on the... it's not really downtime. It's just not as, I would say, focused and directed as it needed to be. Okay. They, we all we will continue to work with our grade levels and our PLCs. It's not wasted time. Mm -hmm. We're just not covering probably what they needed, and so we wanted to bring them in on the conversation, right? Because they're the best people to tell us what they need, rather than just the top down making the decision for them. Got it. So I also like to see the two campuses collaborating more grade level to grade level, both in the vertical and the horizontal. Vertical and horizontal. Yeah. Than ever than before. Any other time mm -hmm. that the team collaborate. So we talked about it every six weeks or eight weeks. They get out at one o'clock. They can share going to the campus. So instead of two to three teachers making those decisions, you have more people at the grade level. And one of the questions when we work with the PLCs, we'll be saying is, what is absolutely necessary for every child to know at your grade level? If you're moving to fourth grade, what does every third grader need to know? So both staff can have that conversation yep. and make sure that we're teaching what we need to be teaching essential standards so there's a lot of work that we feel that needs to be done but by pulling the resources all of our teachers are talented they all have their strengths and we can draw from our great teachers to help each other and that's really what we've well, been working on right. right well and what's stunning to me always is to find out is to see just how how your plate runneth over with things to do and you just you get up here and you talk about the emergency plan and the SRO and doors that need some things and other things that need to be taken to the district and oh, I got this staff development thing and you know it's almost like a tangential sort of conversation but it's a huge thing this staff development thing is huge and I love to hear you know about the peer piece right so you got fifth grade teachers talking to fifth grade teachers about what are you doing that works and what am I doing that works and and then nobody's coming into fifth grade I'm not getting surprised by somebody who doesn't know something or a bunch of kids who don't know something. And so I'm interested to know how we can support that, how we as a board can support that initiative that you're doing. And so part of that is, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of saying, look, if, if, if this is important to us, I don't want you to just say, hey, here's some of the things that we can do. We could do this, we could do that, we could do this other thing. And instead, you know, help us, I wanna help you. Well, what you're going to see as a board in the next couple of months is you're going to see approving a lot of uh, materials. Okay. Because in meeting with the teachers, you know, it was very obvious what in order for for them to do what we want them to do, they need the materials mm -hmm. to do it. And I would like to see more sharing um, at board meetings once we have time to do that. So you mean Mary sharing? <laughs> she doesn't share. Sure. But you know, some really great things are happening in our classroom. I'd like the board to have the opportunity to hear more about that. I think Whether more important than you and I sharing out is teachers would be to invite, and, and it doesn't need to be those who necessarily run an advisory council or uh, the liaisons on the honor society board. It needs to be um, students and teachers coming to share what's working for them and how they feel um, we can further support them. I think that uh, communication is necessary. And I always, you'll, uh, Kathy will tell you that she's heard this a lot. I always invite board members. I know everybody's working, but come into our school, see what's going on, and we will always let you know if we're having that special staff development, and you always feel free to come join us. 
Okay. So you guys both s collaborate just on your own. So organically, you guys work together and have this staff development commitment, and you're doing some things. Mm -hmm. And so where does that budget come out of? It comes out of your site budget? Okay. So I, as a teacher, come to you and I say, hey, I know this event going on in Palm Springs, or pick a fun place that I really want to go to. <laughs> and I want to go there because I'm going to be with a thousand of my peers from other places and I want to learn some stuff. And that's going to cost a thousand dollars. That's coming out of your staff budget. Coming out of the budget. Right. Okay. What we found is even more powerful though is instead of sending one person to one of those conferences. Send half a person? Well, <laughs> bring it here. Because in order for staff development to really make an impact, it can't be a one-time shot. Mm -hmm. So sending someone to, s and, and conferences are great, and we will do that, but it had, you have to make the commitment, if you're going to make the commitment with the dollars to send someone, that that topic is revisited yeah. at staff meetings, at PLCs, so that you can, the host grade level or school is gonna benefit from it. Yeah. Because otherwise they could come home and they put it in their file cabinet and never goes anywhere. We know in order to be good at something, we yeah. have to practice it. Well, and I don't want to take up a lot, oh, too much time about this, but, but it is important. And I just want to make sure that, um, that we have a formality to that right. that says, hey, look, Tammy, we're going to send you to this function, and it's going to cost $1,000 or whatever the number is. Um, but part of you going is we want you to come back, and we need you to commit to right. four sessions with you know, your peers or whatever. So that we're getting the big bounce for that, and because I, I think that there's a lot that comes from you going there, learning what you think you learned, and it coming back. back and bringing it here, and now when you talk about it with me, now all of a sudden you 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 have a level of understanding that you really didn't even have there. But the other piece of that is not just talking about it with us, but really talking about it with the host staff or their grade level, depending yeah. on you know some things pertain to a grade level that don't pertain to the host staff. Okay. We so sent, we sent three representatives this year. Um, microphone. YouTube Landia, our people are well, out there. She's taller than I am. I'm on my six we sent three individuals to um, the gate conference, for example, this mm -hmm. year. They came home with the homework. Uh, I, we uh, approved a few dollars for them to bring some resources back to the staff. They came back. They led a P, uh, professional training for us. They have visited that particular conversation twice and they are going to be presenting again um, everything that they've brought back plus more that they'd like to share they're going to demonstrate some activities they're going to share some gate frames they're going to um, provide some resources and some training and I really like the idea of distributed leadership so that it is not just always as Michelle said us speaking down to them mm -hmm. or at them. Mm -hmm. I want them involved and I think um, we had a lot of teachers last year going into other classrooms observing each other and um, their biggest aha moments were when well I've tried that but I didn't quite try it this way and so they came back with um, a reflection mm. and improvement in their strategies. So. Well don't go anywhere because I'm going to ask Joseph for something here in a second. Go ahead, sorry. One of our goals is that when we meet with our, st or when they meet with each other with their PLCs and they're looking at the data and they're trying to decide what to do with that, is the data just doesn't tell them who they should accelerate or remediate, but the data should help them change their instructional practices and have the conversation of, wow, your class got 96% of these kids mastered the standard. What instructional strategy did you use? And can I come in and watch you? And as administrators, we are more than happy to go take a class to release a teacher to do that. But we have to build the platform so that they can have those kind of conversations. Right. And why, why, um, why this is important to me is very simply uh, that teacher development is very, very important. Staff development across the board is very important. It's that clearly OPA has demonstrated that we've got stunning academic performance. And so there's a secret sauce in there. And with all of that, through all of the things that we talk about, uh, MOUs and budgets and st storage and desks and stuff, I, I get worried that we, at some point, aren't focused on what we need to focus on, right? Because we're so distracted by all this. Uh, it's important. 
but we get we're distracted and uh, so I want to I love that you guys are doing what you're doing and I and I, I want to help I want to be as helpful as I can and so my question for Joseph or who whomever can help me answer this question is a uh, how can we without this directly impacting their site budget is there something we can do as a board to help facilitate this process to to I don't want to say officiate it but you know maybe put together a group that does this and has some you know semi regular meetings and you know talks about things that they can achieve and there's I don't want to say minutes I mean I don't want to create a burden but at the same time you know that I love the idea of collaboration I love the idea of getting teachers involved in the development plan and having them weigh in and saying yeah this is what we'd love to do and then talk about that and without you having to say well I have a choice to make I can either get new basketball hoops or I can send you to Palm Springs and you rather have, than you have supported this though in the LCAP so if you look at your LCAP there's a lot of what we're doing is written into that so that's a great thing yeah I'm thinking more about staff development more making it more personalized so if I have an idea of something that I want to do do I just come to you and say hey I'd really love to do this mm -hmm. is there not some group that I go to or do I go to my advisory council and say hey I have an idea for something or you would probably start because if we had a, can pull together a leadership team mm -hmm. our staff is small enough that we that can be a topic for teachers and I as I said what we have listed came from teachers I will say that some of it I might have brought up because it's things that I saw as I walked through classrooms but it was generated by teachers and was important to them so that's kind of like a grassroot mm -hmm. they wanted it so we're going to implement it got it so Joseph is there so what else can we do to help them with that kind of thing I almost feel like we should punt it back to the two chancellors and ask them if there would the role if the presence of one or more board members if it's more than it becomes a committee right. becomes a help or a burden to that process well I think what I hear him saying is leave me alone leave me no, alone I, I got this Okay. And it, we break into collaborative groups. Okay. It's power. It's yeah. powerful for staff to see board members interested in what they're doing. Then okay. maybe what we do, Mr. Jackson, is we rotate through attending those meetings as, as we can and are available. Got and it. We we can coordinate that with the chancellors, right. and then we can agree on that amongst ourselves to see if we can make sure that we can always, always, or more often than not, have one of us in attendance at each one. So we were just talking and saying that once once well we want to get the new chancellor in play here um, Good we idea. can create a schedule because not every Friday will PD because we need it we need that PLC time uh, but we can give you this and will you tell everybody in YouTube Landia what PLC time <laughs> is because I know what okay. that is it's a professional learning community that's the initials for that got it and it's it and I really didn't know what that <laughs> was by the way it moves the conversation at a grade level or across grade level from just having a grade level meeting where you talk about anything, um, field trips or whatever, to really concentrate on evidence that shows how kids are learning and what needs to be done instructionally to make ensure that they're learning. And so it changes the conversation. So we want to give them that time, but once we get the chancellor and the new dean in place, the four administrators can sit down and really plan that out and talk about when will be PLC days when will be staff development days and get that schedule out so you can look at it and know what we're doing. And it's staff development day because I don't want to come there and interfere with something that's happening as much as be able to have a, you know, kind of an organic conversation about. They may put you to work. What does development look like and right. anything, what are people thinking about things that we can do better, if there's something that we can do better. Mm -hmm. Training. Yeah, trainings, is there something specific, is there some sort of methodology to how suggestions should be handled so that they're, We've got a list of them, and so, you know, they feel like everybody's getting a fair shake. Well, I think it's important, and that's what we tried to do with having the individual meetings, to make sure, ensure that everyone has a voice. Mm. Um, something that I also think is we need to train our classified, too. We can't just, you know, just work with our certificated staff, so we'll be just spending some time. Classified is always harder because they're hourly, and they don't all work the same hours, so trying to find them a time, but I think it's important. We want to make sure that we're supporting our staff so they can do their job. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much, by the way. Please don't move. So I have a question on the security, because I think that's really important. And so two things. One is, 
Um, I recall a while back there was a vulnerability assessment done, if I'm not mistaken. So I would like to see something back to the Board of Report on how that vulnerability assessment is going to be used to improve our site safety as we kick off the new year. And then I would also suggest that um, we have a committee that would include um, at least one board member where we talk about safety on both campuses and make sure that we're sharing and we are improving and doing what's best to keep students and the community safe. It's not uncommon for schools and we definitely could do it together to have a safety committee where they meet you know, once a month, once every two months um, and talk about the needs and what, remember your safe school plan needs to be approved by the board every year by March 1st, so it, it needs to go through your advisory committee. So there's a lot of dialogue that what goes into it and the safety committee could report to that. So that's something that the two administrators could work on. That would be great. I'd like to see action items. I know we're starting to do that right, where we take it. So, so you both have ownership of it and then we can establish meetings moving forward and then among us, we could figure out who the right person, maybe we rotate out as you suggested before, so again, that we can help and move things forward. And again, I think that's something that we can implement, but I'd like to see the chancellor get in place first. Okay. Thank you. So what, I, uh, what I'm hearing is we need to get a chancellor in place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can do it, but then somebody's gonna have to come in and they may not want to do it the same way. So since it's something new, let's let the new persons get us started. Duly noted. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> All right. Takes us to the next item, which is correspondence from Gilbert and Associates for March and April. Oswaldo Diaz, who is not with us at this time, meaning not in the building. <laughs> I just want to refer you to the uh, two reports by uh, Gilbert and Associates uh, for March and April, uh, reviewing all of the policies and the controls um, that they were asked to do on a regular basis, and they had no findings and no concerns for both March and April. Excellent. Next item is comments from the Board of Director. We'll start, directors, we will start at the far end of the table. Mr. Jackson, is there anything you'd like to share? Oh, I do want to share, but I want to go last, please. Okay. Ms. Campos, anything you'd like to share? Um, just excitement that the MOU has been signed and look forward to working with everybody um, to learn and move forward in a positive direction. So thank you for everybody, to everyone who helped um, making it possible and looking forward to a new successful year. Thank you, Ms. Campo. Mr. Teeple. Uh, there were a lot of people who uh, contributed to, to getting that MOU done and, and it was no, no easy feat. And we didn't know if it was gonna happen. We didn't know what was gonna happen with the revocation. We didn't know what was gonna happen with the district. And, and uh, like Mary said, I'm really excited that, uh, that, we, that we do have this, uh, this MOU to, to move forward on and, and a direction to go in. Um, there's, uh, there's three individuals in the room. I just want to recognize those people in particular for, for the extra and, and uh, her Herculean effort that they, that they did. Jerry, our, our lawyer, um, he, 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 was, uh, he was all over this thing and, and spent an inordinate amount of time uh, making sure that it went smoothly and, and that we got it done, and, and uh, Kathy, of course, she was uh, she was incredibly committed to to the process, and and our chairperson uh, Joseph, he was uh, he was at all the meetings and representing the uh, the school, and he did an excellent job with that. So for the three of you, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. So I guess in order to respect Mr. Jackson's wishes, as it comes to me, uh, last night I had the opportunity to thank the CSD uh, board and their staff and their attorneys for what they for working with us, for working and listening to our parents, our teachers, our staff. And uh, so tonight is the opportunity to thank our teachers, our parents, and our staff. Um, you really came through when we needed you to. You represented our school and our organization in the best possible way. And I'm 100% convinced that board is not as receptive to the idea if it weren't for the role that each one of you played. So thank you. And now back to you, Mr. Jackson. All right. So uh, lots of stakeholders out there, lots of groups all uh, toeing the line here. We, I appreciate that uh, everybody has had faith in the organization throughout this uh, crazy little time. 
And uh, my board mates are amazing. Lots of uh, meetings, excessive amounts of meetings even. Um, but I want to draw everybody's attention to, to something specific. And Josh touched on it, and that's, uh, and that's, Mr. that's our chairperson, jo Joseph Haney. And I want you to know that, um, that things like this don't come together because of fancy documents. Things don't, like this don't come together because of uh, vivacious vernacular. They come together because of people. They come together because of commitments. They come together because people like Joseph represent us, represent our organization, represent our board in meeting after meeting and call after call and email after email. And it's an amazing, a stunning amount of work. Stunning. If I told you it was a part-time job, I would be lying. This is a full-time job, plus we came to this board, he and I together same time. We came to this board, and I remember saying flippantly I would be available as much as needed. And I didn't realize what that was going to come to mean, and I'm sure that Joseph didn't realize what it came, would come to mean for him. But I can tell you that for every email I see, every email I get, Every phone call I have, he has five. And I cannot tell you how fortunate I feel and I believe this organization is to have him as our leader. I've seen him look in the face of people who don't trust us for a lot of good reasons and a lot of history. And he looks them in the face and he says, we're different. And it's him and his commitment and him showing on behalf of us. This isn't a unilateral thing, right? It's that Joseph is standing on all of our collective shoulders, our parents, our teachers, who were amazing speakers and were respectful. And it was conspicuously different than it's been in the past. And that all has made a huge difference. And that inspires him to do things like look in the face of people who judge us and say we're different trust me we're different and the MOU tells me tells you and tells Joseph Haney they believe him and so for that I say if you get a chance visit with them tell them thanks keep in mind that ratio I get a lot of OPA emails I have a lot of OPA phone calls and I have a lot of o OPA meetings he has easily five for everyone I have. It's incredible, and for that I just want to say, Joseph, I appreciate you as a human being and as my chairperson a great deal. Thank you. I'm not sure if you're trying to break me, Mr. Jackson, but you came really close. <laughs> um, thank you. Next up is comments from the interim executive. I also want to thank the board uh, as a whole and um, the leadership that Joseph has offered, but I want to thank our community and um, particularly our parents and staff. Uh, you have been amazing throughout this process. You have kept your hopes high. You've been positive and you have been supportive even when we hit our little bumps in the road. Uh, we have uh, a long road ahead of us. It's not done, but it's a positive road and there is going to be some positives at the end of this and um, I'm particularly proud of the way we all handle ourselves and uh, you made an impression on um, all of those who are watching so thank you let's keep it up the other thing I wanted to share is that we are interviewing for uh, an executive director on Tuesday we're very excited to have that interview process again and we will be hoping that the interviews result in the selection of an outstanding candidate to lead this organization forward. In addition, we've started the interview process for Chancellor. And um, thank you to the interview committee, which is comprised of staff and parents. Uh, it's, it was, it's been interesting, um, to say the least. Uh, we are not finished with the process yet. We have more interviews scheduled on Monday. Uh, we have some finalist candidates, but we're excited and we hope to have uh, a candidate to move forward in the next week or so as well. 
uh, but thank you to the committee for coming and, and doing your due diligence and, and being mindful of the needs of everyone, so kind of setting aside your own personal thoughts and, and really operating as a team, and today was a great example of that, so I appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. So we move now to item C, comments from the audience on items not on the agenda. Do we have any cards? We do not have any cards, which takes us to D, item scheduled for <coughs> consent after the agenda was so modified at the beginning of the session. We have just the first one. Minutes from regular board meetings, 62818, 710-18, special meeting 713-18, and regular meeting 716-18. A I'd lot of meetings. Uh, I'd like to, I'm gonna abstain from two of these that I wasn't present at, so, so I'd like to make the first motion to approve the minutes from the meetings on June 28th, July 10th, and July 16th, 2018. Do I have a motion, or do I have a second to that motion? I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion passes unanimously. So that was 628, 7, 10, 10. and 716. So the other two were 73 and 713. Okay. So we have a, do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the July 3rd and July 13th, 2018 me meetings? I motion to approve the minutes from July 3rd, 2018 special meeting and July 13th, 2018 regular meeting. Do I have a second? I will second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Those abstaining? Aye. That's me. This motion passes by a vote of three to zero to one. Next move on to items for discussion and or action. First item is approve Orange County Office of Education invoice for SB oversight. The board is required to approve any expenditures that exceed $15,000. The 2017-18 annual 1% oversight fee for Saddleback Valley of $23,103.12 based upon revenue received is brought to the board for consideration. It is recommended the board of directors approve the OCD invoice for $23,103.12. Do I have a motion? Can we get like a 10 net one or something from that? A what? Just kidding. The discount. I believe Mr. Jackson was asking for preferential payment terms. <laughs> no, not really. No. Can I uh, j just explain that we don't have to pay our oversight fee in one lump sum. They bill us throughout the year um, based on our attendance and our revenues as they come forward in P1 and P2. So this is the final payment for the revenues received in 1718 based on our P2 uh, attendance, which was then uh, resulted in the revenues that we received. Okay, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? This motion passes unanimously. Move to item three, approve Prop 39 invoice from MCOR. The board is required to approve any expenditures that exceed $15,000. The second invoice from 61118 for the Prop 39 energy efficiency work completed to date at the SOC campus as part of the adopted plan and the amount of $88,213.58 is brought to the board for consideration. It is recommended the board of director approves the MCOR invoice. I'll move to approve the MCOR invoice. Do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor say aye. I aye. have questions. Oops, no Sorry, question. can we have a little bit of a discussion? So, yeah, all right, so if these, Oh, it, go ahead. I was just going to uh, give an overview of this. Remember, um, back in the day when Prop 39 um, monies were identified, there was a requirement from the um, from this grant that a plan be adopted that had to be approved by the state. That plan was adopted, and uh, the services of MCOR was approved for energy efficiency. And so this. Uh, this invoice is a result of the work that is completed to date on this facility only. So this is the prop ener the energy efficiency piece. There is uh, still some more work to be done, but at this point in time, this is uh, a component of it, and this money has been set aside uh, for this in our budget. Would you wish to have further discussion, Mr. Jackson? See, si. okay. I would like to know more about, because uh, there are, I understand that there are un completed items here, but this is taking us all the way down to the retention level, which would to me be that we're materially complete and that all we're doing is waiting on any sorts of issues, issues the, the to The final walkthroughs, right? 
but right. it, but we're not really there yet. No. S okay, so why are we paying a bill? So why are we paying this up to 95% complete if we're not 95% com complete with the work? I believe the work actually has been completed. They just have to do the um, the final checks and balances on it. And um, I have not been working with this uh, organization to see where they're at with that. This was something that was being done by our our facilities manager. So it's something that we would have to find out. I do know that um, the work was signed off and we keep that retention in case there's something else that still needs to be tweaked. Okay, so how would this work, Joseph? So Josh would need to rescind his motion to approve if, if and then I would make a motion to ap approve this pending some additional uh, documentation confirming that they are 100% complete with their scope and that all we're waiting for is our walk. Okay. Is that how that would work? That okay. is correct. Okay, because I'm just nervous that we're not 100% complete. Well, it says delivered and installed 85%. Right, but that's why I don't understand. If you're, right. if you're complete at 85 and you're billing me to 95, I feel like we're probably out of whack a little bit. Is there any retainage on this? There's 5% yeah. retainer. Five? Only five. Oh, there is. I would have to get more information and bring it back to you because I haven't been working with this organization, um, and I can do that. We have a meeting scheduled for uh, August 8th. Is this so a small business? Are these guys small or are they huge? No, this is, course, this is huge. Oh, okay. they're, they're recognized and, and generally accepted as the energy efficiency groups that are used throughout Southern California. Actually, m more than that, but here in Southern California for the energy efficiency pieces that were put into the plan to be done. And there, um, when the plan was approved, it was approved with their submission of the work that they were going to do. So this was approved by the state with their submission as well. Got it. I, I'm just trying to understand if they were small businesses, $80,000 invoice, that'd be devastating. But if they're a big company, big corp, mega corp. But either way, the net of it is that you're 85% complete. You're billing me to 95 and that doesn't make, that doesn't make sense to me. I think I feel like we need to resolve that somehow. Well, I'll be happy to bring back information on that. I do want to draw your attention to the date of the invoice, which was um, June 11th, when the work was completed. Did we not receive it until recently? I mean, we just went through the, we went through five minute meetings in that time. It was sent to First Note Finance, and they forwarded it to us with the recommendation to pay it. Um, and they just forwarded it on the 12th, but they, but MCOR sent it to First Note Finance on June 11th. And how is uh, what is that process like? I'm not trying to make this thing more difficult. So than it First needs Note to be, Finance uh, helped us figure out how to spend all that money. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. So, but this is the AC work that's been ongoing on campus. So, I do not believe, because I've been on and off campus at different times, this work was not completed on June 11th. Like, I've seen them here since then. So, if the invoice came in, it was prior to it being complete. Which is why she recommended paying it now, because the work is 85% complete. Okay, but the... The bill came in advance of them doing I the work is my point. Okay. And that's so why First Note Finance holds on to it until to we yeah. verify that the work is done to 85%. So I guess the question is why isn't the bill for 85% of the, of the contract instead of 95%? I think I think it is at eighty five percent. The total bill to date is one twenty one for uh, twenty seven sixty. The total amount of the project is one forty two, and this bill is for eighty eight two thirteen. All 
I'm happy to connect with um, uh, First Note Finance uh, with, it looks like, Amanda Killian, who is the energy project manager, and ask her to come to the next meeting and bring this back. Okay. Mr. Jackson, just so I understand, uh, maybe my math is slow. No, it's right. You don't even know what the answer is. It's 85. That's what I'm saying. I got 85. Yeah, 84, 9 or whatever. So are you okay with this being an 85? An yeah, interest? as long as the work's done. That's it's what I care less about. Than that. it, we're, we've, we've only, because of the 5% retention, we're only going to pay 80% of the total contract amount with this 88,213. So you, if you add up the 88,213 yeah. plus the 27,142 and divide that sum by 142,856, that's 80%. 237,465, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, <laughs> It's like Rain Man over here. You hear that? <laughs> no, I got a cut. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I just okay. So um, as long as the work plus the five percent retention, so they've done eighty-five percent of the work. They're we're only paying we're eighty. We're only that five. We're paying we're eighty percent of eighty-five. percent Got it. For we're paying for eighty percent of the and contract. You, and you're you're confident that the work's done? Have we confirmed it's at eighty-five percent? Do we know what's included in that? Part, part part of the work that First Note Finance Amanda Killian has to do is verify that the work is done. That she is the project manager for our um, energy efficiency plan. Got it. And that the beautiful part about that is we I need to have visibility into that. So I need to have a look at like a scope of work that says, you know, there's thirteen items that need to be done. Ten. 10 items are complete kind of thing so that we're more comfortable about that that work is done instead of just getting a bill and says hey do it right I'm just trying to be sure that we do our job of making sure that we're paying bills for things that's really getting done so it would be helpful I guess I'm addressing my board chair here well, Mr. you're Chairperson. probably addressing it to the executive director so I'm listening well I'm what direction can we give to staff to say when they do the board packet it would sure be nice if would they included supporting documentation Kathleen okay and I'll and I will get that um, again you can take action tonight or we can move it for two weeks no, and good. I can get the documentation for you I'm good okay we have Josh Teeple here man we're good but for future whenever we have an invoice I'll have the the backup work and then who handles the, the, the monitoring the lien releases for the organization? I don't know the answer to that question. I, I suspect that Oswaldo would know the answer to that question. But I do know that any payments that get made uh, from this particular work get handled by this company. Okay, because this is a lien conditional waiver uh, that's effective through June 11th. We should. I just want to make sure somebody's monitoring the lien release process for us. And if that's Amanda Killian at First Note Finance, that's fine. I just want to make sure that that process is not falling through the cracks. So uh, I'll ask her. I'll follow up on that. Thank you. Okay. All right. So are we, we have a motion. Do I think and a we second. voted on it. No and, a second. Yeah. and a second. Well, we and a second. Yeah. Well, we did not vote. All right. The motion before the board is to approve the MCOR invoice. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? This motion passes by a vote of four to zero. Move now to item five, approve new wellness policy. To ensure Oxford Preparatory Academy is compliant with all board policies and protocols required by its authorizers, the state and national, lunch school, national school lunch program, the board will consider approval of the policy regarding school wellness. I would like to treat this as a non-action item but a first read information item tonight. Uh, mainly because we didn't get this information back with the recommended changes in time for the board to have the time to review it. Um, this is a required policy as part of the National School Lunch Program. We're required to have a health and wellness policy. This policy was developed by our legal counsel with certain um, sections inserted based on the work that was done this past year from the uh, wellness committee and um, it will come back as required. There has to be participation from staff uh, and parents from both of the schools because this policy affects both of the schools in the National School Lunch Program. There are certain components in there that direct an annual review that discuss what's going to happen uh, at the school sites in, this, in the form of goals and that also 
takes a look at the educational perspective of student wellness and student health. And um, so I would like you to take a look at this, um, and then it will come back at the next meeting. We do have to have it up and ready to go before the start of school, uh, as required by the National School Lunch Program. Do, did we, we just changed, uh, we just changed our lunch providers, right, last year? We didn't? Last year was the first year that we participated in the National School Lunch Program, and we were with Revolution Foods, and we maintained that contract. Mm, okay, so it was before then. It was before delicious. Before then, we were with Viva Foods. Got it. And we were not participating in the National School Lunch Program, so the rules were very different. Was it delicious then, and it's less delicious now? That's it's what my now little very compliant mm. with uh, <laughs> <laughs> guidelines. <laughs> compliant does not well necessarily said. mean delicious. <laughs> well, mm. We're going to brainwash it's everybody very to believe good. it's delicious. Okay. They have served uh, meals during board meetings. <laughs> you enjoyed <laughs> them. I'm teasing. That was before your time. I like how you said that. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a Jedi mind trick. <laughs> you, you've enjoyed those meals thoroughly. <laughs> yes, we have. Right. Any further discussion on the new student wellness policy? It, I, I know this is kind of focused, and it's a mandated thing, but it's focused on, on food and maybe exercise and stuff, which is all great. Right. Do, do we address illness anywhere? Is there an illness policy, like when you should keep your kid at home or when a teacher shouldn't show up because they're sick? Uh, that's what? There should be, yeah, th you know, there isn't a, a, a policy like that. We can make recommendations in the school attendance policy, and I believe there are recommendations for when children are sick in the attendance policy, and that's one of the things that we're revisiting uh, at each school site is how to handle it when your child is sick and for staff how to handle it when you're sick as well. Yeah, my company, we, we have a, we call it a wellness policy, but it's really a sickness policy, and, <laughs> and, and you know, if, if you have the sniffles, we insist you work from home because we just don't want that stuff spreading with wildfire. So I don't know if that's same, part of the same thing or, or if this is just a different discussion. This is different. Yeah, this one has to do with the health and wellness of, of nutrition, um, making good choices for yourself with physical exercise, and, and just making good choices overall. Well, I'm all for that. Right. Does this apply to your uh, <laughs> your ED? <laughs> I suppose it would. Uh -huh. uh, it it might more it, it it might more apply to the exercise that we need to be getting instead of the sitting that we're doing. Now you went there. <laughs> now, you, now you put it out there. Possibly even the sugary beverage you're enjoying. I know. I do want you to know that inside of my tea bottle is healthy tea, non-caffeinated, and no sugar sweetener. Right. So, Great. no sodas, or peanut butter cups. That was for our legal counsel. <laughs> okay, those are fighting words right there. <laughs> okay, before this uh, devolves into something more aggressive, we'll move on to item six. 2018-19 meal uh, charge policy to ensure Oxford Preparatory Academy is compliant with all board policies and protocols required by its authorizers, the state and the national school lunch program. The board will consider approval of the 2018-19 meal change po policy, meal applications, processes and or procedures and prices. So again, this is a part of the national school lunch program. I'm not asking for it for approval tonight because the board hasn't had time to process it. Uh, this has been vetted by our legal counsel, and um, this is also uh, contains all of the issues that we need to, all the compliance statements that need to be a part of this. This really protects uh, students who may or may not have the ability to pay for lunches but don't have the money to eat. And um, this has come about because in the last two to three years, in particular, uh, students across the nation were denied a lunch because of the lack of ability to pay. So this takes that into account. Okay, any comments or questions here? We've all learned our lessons. We do not discuss this. All right, takes us to seven. CUSD and uh, slash OPA MOU, Committee for Component Implementation. The board will discuss and may take action to form a board committee for management and or oversight for each of the A through P elements and or actions described and required to meet the components of the MOU by December 31, 2018. 
recommend to the Board of Directors, discuss with possible action. Well, since I put that on the agenda, I guess I get to lead. That discussion. would be you. Um, one of the messages that came through, I believe, loud and clear from the CUSD Board of Trustees at the public hearing when they raised the uh, possibility of us having a uh, MOU was that the board needed to step into its role as the organization that has oversight for the schools and this organization. Those are rules that are detailed in our charter and that are detailed under California's corporation code. I'm mindful of the fact that that can be perceived as micromanaging and stepping into a role that the board um, may be seen as board oversight depending upon where that line is drawn. But I believe that the board can and should oversee the adoption and the implementation of this MOU consistent with our legal obligations, consistent with our charter obligations, consistent with the instruction from the CUSD Board of Trustees. I understand that this, as a board-directed committee, would create some additional burden, but I can believe that the way the intention of this committee should not result in that being much more than a de minimis amount of work early on. Uh, the thought would be is we, we treat this like any private organization would and we build out a schedule of milestones, we back into the deliverables, what it would take, and we, based upon that, we start benchmarking dates at which this board would meet and staff would come forth with what they received at that time, proposed submissions to CUSD would be vetted for adequacy, completeness, and brainstorming as to additional ideas of uh, materials that we believe should be submitted. Um, because this committee would be working off of a calendar, all of those meetings would already be scheduled. So the Brown Act, uh, while applicable, would be mitigated in terms of being a hindrance to getting things accomplished. And since it's the same agenda item each meeting, the, once the initial agenda is done, we're just changing date and or time. So I don't believe that this creates any sort of unnecessary administrative burden, but rather this demonstrates to CUSD, particularly in light of last night's vote in which they placed confidence in this organization, that we are prepared to step into and take the reins of the role that they've charged us with so having. So it is my recommendation that we form a committee to take ownership of that, working with staff, not working and doing the work of staff, but making sure that we have the direct control of that process. And do we, do we have comment cards? I'm sorry, I didn't ask. Okay. So uh, I thought this was a good idea when you said de minimis. Thank you. Because I, I, love, I love it when people say things like that. I wanted to say vivacious vernacular, but I forgot to. But I wrote it down for Thank work you. tomorrow. Thank you. Um, so one of the things that I noticed um, that during the NOV process, Kathleen got her, she, somebody wagged their finger at her to do some stuff, making sure that they said, hey, you got to be clear to do some stuff. And I noticed most recently you, Joseph, he got wagged, somebody wagged their finger at you and said, you need to take ownership of this. You need to get this done. I don't remember those exact words, but I remember the finger wagging part vividly. And so, but basically it was like, a, hey, I think the board needs to, what, what did they say? Do you, you, you remember what I'm talking about, right? CUSD said, what did they say? Take control of the school. There you go. And so I can't think of uh, how they could be any more clear than that. So to me, this sounds like a brilliant idea, and I would like to make a motion to do that very thing. Uh, I disagree. I think that uh, this should be a committee that's run by the executive director and possibly a board member sits on it, a single board member, so we don't have the Brown, uh, the Brown Act uh, um, implication. Um, when I think they said take over the school, I think they meant to act like a board and, and provide the appropriate level of oversight uh, that a board should provide. I don't think that that means actually delving in and making sure that every single uh, item on the MOU is ticked and tied out and done appropriately. I think that's a, a job that needs to be done at the executive director level solely um, to make sure that that gets done. 
So I see it as um, more of a partnership between the board and staff to make sure that we're meeting the intent of the MOU and by checking the box on each of those items um, that's the security and assurance that we're doing it correctly so I don't see that piece as overstepping bounds um, if in fact the role of the board is to manage and oversee and then to adhere to schedules I don't believe that any of the board members should be writing and directly taking ownership of the individual items, but the entire package and what is delivered is our responsibility. Well, with all due respect to my, to my board mates, I think that's actually the responsibility of the executive director, and we can have oversight to that, and the executive director can report to us um, on the progress of, of those items and how we, how the organization is complying with the terms of the MOU, I don't think that we need to micromanage that process. I think it makes it more unwieldy. I think it uh, limits the ability of the executive director to act, to react and act quickly if, if something comes up and that's necessary. I, I just think we're going bad, down a, a, a bad path here. I really do. Well, Josh, I appreciate that. I appreciate you putting that warning out there because we, we don't want to get into a spot where we're micromanaging. I mean, that's, that's something we don't want to do. And I don't feel like that's something that anybody has in their head, that we're going to get in there and we're going to be uh, having semantic conversations about what word was used or what was. What I feel like this committee can do, however, which would be very helpful in my estimation and also add a great deal of value to the ultimate work product is to create a framework that says, hey, <clears throat> this is the MOU. And of the MOU, these are the, these are the elements of the MOU. These are things that we can do to, as collaborators, right? So we're gonna, we're, there's nobody's gonna be doing stuff, but just this framework that says, this is how we flush out a response to the MOU. These are those kind of um, yardsticks. These are these measurements of success and with dates and times and things like that. And to me, that doesn't seem like a doer. That doesn't seem like a, it doesn't feel like a micromanager. It feels like I'm just spelling out what success looks like. All of that can be done without a board committee, is what I'm saying. So with, with the appropriate level of board oversight, you don't need a committee for this. If you if you layer a committee on top to try on on top of trying to adhere to the terms of the MOU and be flexible and be reactive, it's it's just going to blow up. It's a terrible idea. Why so so I, I so here's the thing. I, I agree with you on the reporting and I believe that's the intent of this. It's not writing it. So I think we're we're all in agreement on that reporting needs to be done to make sure we're meeting milestones and goals and that the quality is what we agree to. I think what we need to discuss and brainstorm then is in the absence of a board led committee that can then have the authority to say hey on this day we were supposed to see this draft which I believe is what we're getting to here right so if we all agree on that then what is the solution to get there without the committee because board di directed staff directed committees in the past haven't been so effective so I think that's the discussion we need to have I think the ironic part of this discussion right now is we all agree on the reporting and what the intent is to do, but how do we achieve that goal together? What is the right solution? Kathy, do you have any suggestions in that regard? Because I think those are very good points. Um, I, I think the best thing to do would be to set up a, a set of benchmarks when things are due and that those things need to come in and then the staff would just work on those to get those as a report to the board as, um, as agreed upon. Um, certainly the board can set the benchmarks. Um, but it is more difficult when um, meetings are scheduled uh, with the um, job responsibilities, particularly uh, recently, that uh, uh, both as Waldo and I have and your new ED is going to have in um, working with the school sites and also uh, continuing to work within the organization and the things that need to be done. It's much more difficult to work in a com committee format, um, but I absolutely agree that the board needs to have benchmark dates when things are due and needs to be 
um, given the, the items to take a look at. I think the person that really truly needs to be involved with this is legal counsel. And so I, I just have another question to add to that because honestly, my biggest concern, and I think we're all saying the same thing, so that's the important part of this. I think we agree. Um, my concern is exactly what Kathleen just mentioned, which is this job is pretty overwhelming of ED. There's a lot of stuff going on, even for Oswaldo every day, right? It's a moving target. And the concern is for the MOU and those elements not to get lost in all that. So how do we keep it at a level that doesn't get lost and we're tracking it and we're making sure things are happening, right? And th that's, that's where I'm coming yeah, from. I'd like to make it clear, this is not a committee that would be writing the responses. This would be a committee that would be serving uh, in a, an oversight quality control sort of manner. I, I don't think any of us here are unaccustomed to having meetings by which we're expected to bring a deliverable. And it would be, I don't think any of us would tell our clients or our bosses, sorry, I don't work with meeting dates. You'll get the product when I get the product to you. If our client says, I need this by Monday, can you do it? And I say yes, the expectation is I'm going to have product to him on Monday to review. That's not considered a burden. That's considered the job. Um, as Trustee Reardon pointed out during the public hearing, if you look at the description of the executive director's job, it does note that our executive director works under the control of the board of directors. And so what I'm proposing is not that we sit here and micromanage, but rather that we have benchmark dates. And that may be something as simple as on August 10th, we're going to meet and the following three items in response to the MOU are going to be presented. And we want to see a finished product at that time. And at that time, the committee would look at it and say, okay, this is exactly what they wanted. Fantastic. Now we can hit send. It may be when we look at that response and we say, I think we're 75% there, but we're missing the mark with regards to some of what they've asked for. Um, I think that it's very easy when you're in a job to become very focused on what you're doing and you are, can be richly blessed and the pro work product ultimately enhanced when people that are outside of that chamber that you're in day in and day out can lend a set of eyes to it. I know for myself, um, my writing can be greatly enhanced and my product that I deliver to clients can be greatly enhanced when another set of eyes looks at it and is able to bring different uh, background experiences and uh, to the product because they see things differently than how I see things. That's what I envision this, this committee doing, not actually sitting there drafting, <coughs> not actually putting together the financial reports. That's clearly the job of staff. Um, and I would also add that I don't see the administrative burden here by having a bunch of preset meetings because the alternative to having the preset meetings is the fact that we would have no meetings scheduled at all or they'd be scheduled on an ad hoc basis, which has not created an environment of accountability. That is my concern here is we need to have accountability to the board. <coughs> and that I, what I would add is if it is a staff directed committee, that staff can choose whether or not they're going to have meetings. They can choose whether or not they're going to present material to the committee, which means that the board actually at the end does not have any enforcement mechanisms to ensure that what they're overseeing is actually getting done. Well, I think that could all be uh, that all could all be accomplished at the board level at regular board meetings. I think that there could be a standing item on the on the agenda during this MOU process where where we discuss the progress on the MOU, what uh, what the what the committee has been doing to to meet the MOU, and if there's any any issues or anything that we need to cover. I don't know why there needs to be a separate board committee for what is part of the board's oversight at large. To precisely be what you're afraid it won't be, which is to be more nimble, to be more reactive, to be more agile. But if all these reports have to go to a full five-member committee or five-member board, that means it's either happening at our regular me scheduled meeting, which God willing will return to once a month, or we're going to have special meetings. No, I do, but I'm not saying everything has to go to the all the all the all that our job is as a board is to make sure that it's getting done, not to do no, it. I would disagree. I think our job is not just to make sure it's getting done, but it's getting done well. Well, and if while you guys are thinking about what you're thinking about, there's an element of finality to this MOU, right? So this MOU wasn't it's not the checkered flag. It's not like all right, we got an MOU, you know, we're good. It's we got an MOU and now we've got a pretty frigid set of deliverables over the next period of time. And what I like about the the committee is that if 
if you took away all the other things, it's a gesture that says, we take this very, very seriously. And if you were given some sort of magnum opus, this is your life work, would you not commit some a committee to that to say, look, we're going to dedicate resources to this, and we're going to dedicate time to this, and we're going to look at it carefully, and we're going to make sure that nothing slips through the cracks, and we're going to make sure that somebody just doesn't misstate something erroneously. It doesn't happen because you've got a group of, a collective group of people who understand the finality of this whole thing. And so that's where I feel like as long as we're not doing the work, all this is is creating a report card with which to say, instead of say, telling staff, go forward and do good. You have the MOU. You know what you need to do. Get it done. Why couldn't you accomplish the same thing as an, with a committee with one board member, with Jerry on it, with the executive director on it, and other people that still has the ability to be flexi flexible and nimble without why do you need two board members to be on the committee? Why can't, why isn't one sufficient? Well, I feel like that's part of the resource allocation piece that comes, that could be necessary when it comes time to saying, hey, is this, do we need to get more people involved? Do we need to sprinkle more resources on these answers? Do we need to sprinkle more resources on? So, so you're, you're saying that the committee, that the board members on the committee are actually going to do work if, if resources are needed? Uh, resources allocating resources is different than so why rowing the, the why boat versus the one, ordering more rowers is radically different. Why and couldn't so, the one board member help allocate those resources? Then why do you need two board members to allocate resources on this committee? Because I don't want Mary to do this by herself. I want to do it with her. Okay. <laughs> and while you both are pondering that, the uh, executive director would like to add something. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Kathleen. <laughs> Thank you. I was you. just watching. No, and, and, and that's fine. You know, I appreciate the comments from both sides of the, the issue. I think that the real issue is to make sure that everybody is on the same page with benchmarks in place, whether that's done through a board organized committee or, or uh, a set of benchmarks that are put in. I, I just have to say from a standpoint of getting things done, once you set a board committee, then the board committee authorizes different pieces and parts and may authorize uh, extra hires or needs that we have, and so we would have to wait for that. The board needs to be able to know that, that the staff is working in due diligence with these benchmark dates in mind so that they can have this thing. But, but if you take a look at the items that are on that MOU, there is going to be a requirement for staff to make a decision to bring an extra hire or somebody else on board to help out because the way the staff is set up now and looking at the requirements, there's more work that can be done and it's not appropriate for the board to then start jumping in and doing that work. And so, uh, I'm, and so the board committee, if a board committee is established, then the job of the board committee would be to authorize those kinds of things. So I see that as a possible positive without necessarily waiting for board approval. However, on the other side, um, given the things that we're dealing with, finding time in our weekly schedule to, to meet, to discuss the things instead of saying, set up a time initially to say, here's our benchmarks, here's when we want all these things, and we just come together to say, okay, here's product, look at the product, that can be any kind of committee and I don't really care what kind it is. And I don't think that your new executive director would care what kind it is either. I think it's more important to say, staff, you need to do this and you need to report this and these are your timelines. And if you need permission to, for example, get another person to go through the 55 boxes of documents that we have and separate them out, then you have permission to get somebody to go through those 55 boxes because we still have the day-to-day -day things to carry out. And if we need uh, to say, I need someone to go look at data that we've discovered over here, then we need to be able to do that. If I need someone to to go through all of the the legal documents that we have or the contracts so that we can compile a stack of, of, of uh, evidence to demonstrate some issues that have been raised in a couple of the areas of the MOU, 
then I need to be able to have those people to do that or to authorize extra time for those people that we may have on board. So, so those are things that if you have a board committee, the board committee can authorize. If you don't have a board committee, then there has to be some understanding that the executive director or your CBO has the ability to authorize those expenditures, but you have mm -hmm. to have your benchmark dates. So I don't know that we're talking a different language. I think it's a philosophical piece, and from my perspective, um, I've worked with board committees, and board committees served a purpose where decisions were made, and those decisions were brought back to the whole board for approval. They didn't, they weren't there just to, to ensure that things got done. I do know that, that um, Trustee Reardon was very adamant about the board's sole job is to provide uh, oversight and monitor the actions of the executive director and make sure that the executive director holds everybody else accountable. I was very clear when he said that as he wagged his finger at the board to say your job is to provide oversight to the executive director. But the board's job is never to get in and do all of the work. And so for that I would like to respectfully request that whatever way you go, that you let the staff do what they can do best and give the staff the autonomy to be able to pull in extra help because it's going to be necessary to get the job done, to meet the deadlines that you as a board establish so that you have time to examine the work product and determine if you feel it meets the requirement and give the staff the necessary permissions to work with legal counsel to do the same thing. I don't think we're discussing anything different. I, we're not, I'm just, I, I just, yeah. I don't, truly this is not something where I want, that, that I envision the board sitting there and penning letters and repenning the letters and, and you know, but it's a matter of having that oversight, having the involvement in the process. Um, you know, I, it's a matter of bringing just an, it, it, I understand how when you were working on a, on, a, on, a, on a deliverable for a client or a customer, you, you get very focused on it, and if you have the ability for somebody to step in and say, hey, give it to me, I'm gonna spend an hour looking at it, they're gonna come at it with a different set of eyes, they may see things that you didn't see in the process of, try, of trying to get it finished, and ultimately it can enhance the product. Uh, board committees exist for a variety of reasons. We have them for governance, you have them for compensation, uh, you can have them for all sorts of reasons, and they're all very important, and they're board-led committees. At this point in time, I would suggest the, the very existence, the continued existence of the SOC campus is at stake here and cannot think with all, re all due respect to the governing commi governance committee uh, and uh, other committees that we may have at this time, none of them are as important than wh how, whether or not we nail the response to this MOU. And for that reason, carrying off the idea of what uh, Mr. Jackson said, I think it's critically important that the board take ownership of this committee, but not take ownership of um, at the level you think that you're, that the Mr. Teeple's concerned about. Doing. All right, so you got a motion on the table, I think. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? Mm -hmm. I made a motion. Great, Mr. Jackson, motion. I made a motion to form. Great. Did we have a second? I second. Uh, we did have a second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. This motion passes by a vote of three to one. We now need to put people on that committee. Yes, you do. Can we do that even though it's not on the agenda? Uh, I'm going to defer to um, our legal counsel on that one. I yeah, I shot him in the eyes. I believe I believe you can because you said the formation of it. So therefore, the formation. All right. Yeah. So. That's beautiful. Are there any nominees to be on the MOU committee? I've heard a couple of names. I out. nominate Mary. Okay. I second that nomination. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those I abstain. And one abstention. This motion passes by a vote of three to zero to one. Uh, I'd also like to nominate Mr. Jackson for that. I would like to nominate, if I can. I would Absolutely. like to suggest, not nominate, I would like to suggest that uh, Priscilla Trache uh, be on that committee as well. I second that. I can't nominate. Oh, oh then I move <laughs> to, to, to have Priscilla Trache on the committee. Well, why would you, may I, can I just ask, can I ask a question about that? Like, why would you abstain for voting with for Mary, but you vote for Priscilla? She has uh, the, the background the, the in, in education to, to be on this committee. I think it's appropriate that she's on this committee. 
I moved for, for Priscilla to be on the committee. So can I make a suggestion? Entirely open to that. So if I nominate Mr. Jackson, given he has the skill set with scheduling, tying back to reporting, et cetera, that he take my place on that committee with Priscilla? Well, I think we should ask Mr. Jackson if he's interested in serving in that capacity on this committee. How many people are going to be on it? No, two, no. Two, two, two directors or two board members. Okay. I will happily do it. Do we know if Mr. Shea would like to do this? I know that she's willing to serve on the committee, yes. Okay. So, we have a withdrawal then? Yes. No, hold on I a withdraw. second. I'm well, not sure Mr. Jackson's on board 100%. Oh, he's yeah. saying no, I want to have a conversation it. about this. Okay. Oh, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. I'll do whatever. I'm down. Uh, but I feel like we, we should, the part of this whole forming the committee is about marshalling resources and defining the endpoint and what does success look like and that kind of thing. And so to me, this isn't about I'm an educator, so if we're picking teams, right, and I'm, I'm going to pick people on my team, is this, a, is this a team that I want to get an educator on? Is this MOU or is this somebody that I want to get sort of a, a project management um, person, a person who can just organize the project and set it up so that success happens in step one. There's 70, 700 things in that MOU can, that can go wrong. And so that's not, to me, an exercise in education. A person with a lot of years of educational experience would necessarily be great at as much as it would be somebody who is uh, good at saying, I've got a very complex task ahead of me. And that complex task breaks down into a bazillion uh, subcomponents and we're going to put each one of those sub processes down and sort of map that out so that's where I'm saying I feel like Mary's a great choice for that kind of thing this is what she does for a living this is what she's done for a living for a long time and so if we're limited to two two members on the committee um, between she and I I feel like she's She's supremely, more so than probably any of the other of us here. Could I ask Mr. Tebow a question? Mm -hmm. Of items A through P, my recollection is they are overwhelmingly dealing with business and financial matters. Which of the items on there do you think we, that having a board member with an education background would be more advantageous? Okay. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. So she's already on it, right? She's already on the well, committee? She has been voted on. Okay. So now we have a nomination for Priscilla to be on the committee. Is that right? That is correct. Got it. And so we have a, a motion to put her on. So I can second that motion, right? We could. And then we're going to bring it to a vote, and I vote no. Correct. Okay. So are you seconding that? Yes. All right. The motion before the board is to add Priscilla Trache as the second member of the board of directors to the MOU response committee. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. No. This motion failed by a vote of one to three. So we are still looking to add a second member to the committee. Motion. So it should be you or me. So I make a motion that Mr. Jackson be added as the second member to this committee. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 This motion passes by a vote of 3 0 to 1. The MOU committee will be, uh, rep the board of directors will be represented on the MOU committee by Mr. Jackson and Ms. Campos. Which brings us to item 5 adjournment. It is recommended the board of directors adjourn the special board meeting for July 26, 2018. Do we have any additional closed session business or are we all good with that? We're all good. Okay. Do I have a motion? Yes, yes please. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Yes, please. I second. A second, please. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? This motion passes unanimously. This meeting is adjourned at 8.27 p.m. <laughs>